this series called Made New. I think this is one of the, the biggest topics that, that us as Christians struggle with. We, a lot of us can maybe say the right things, but we struggle to walk the walk rather than just talk the talk. And, um, and outside, it doesn't take long to look around the world and see that this is a struggle of understanding, well, who am I? Who am I made to be? Am, am I what I've become or am I something else? Is there something more for me? Is there something more that I, I could be? Is, there, is this it? Is this my destiny? And so we've settled with a lot of phrases that sound virtuous but are actually fallacies. Things like, well, this is just me. It nearly sounds virtuous to accept some of that stuff, isn't it? But in fact, I've realized, and the Bible continues to reveal to us that when we just accept things that aren't actually us, it, it's, not, it's not a virtuous thing. It's just believing a lie. And a lie believed as a truth will continue to affect us as if it were true. You know, well, you know, I just struggle with these kinds of things. No, that, that is not who you are. You might have a struggle with those things, but in Christ we're set free. I haven't aligned up yet with that, but that is who I am becoming. I am a freed person. I am not bound by sin. I might have some struggle with sins, but I am not a, I'm not a sinner by identity. And this is the wrestle, in fact, most of the New Testament, especially the Apostle Paul, writes to this issue constantly what it is. And so I want to, to like dig into this a little bit this morning and set this up with this verse in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, therefore, <coughs> if anyone is in Christ, now that's important. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. See, the reason that in Christ is important is because Jesus really is the hero here. Jesus is the hero. When we're talking about our identity, we could just go straight past Jesus and bypass to going, you know what, you are good, you are beautiful, you are loved, you are this, you are, and, and try to build your self-esteem from the outside in. But I just need to tell you that your identity, your confidence, your acceptance, your, your self-esteem, your self-image, if it is founded in Christ, it is on something solid. It, that is where we are as a believer, going, well, you know, well, I'm not very good at this sort of stuff. You go, that's fine, but I'm fully accepted in Christ and I just happen to be no good at golf. You know, I'm fully accepted in Jesus and He has done a work in me and this is amazing. I just don't have as much money in the account that I would like, but I'm not basing my worth off that. I know who I am in Christ. That Jesus is the hero and He has to be the hero of the Christian. He has to be the place where we look to find identity. When we're feeling down on ourselves. it is because our eyes have shifted off Jesus and back onto us. Whereas if we can look through Jesus, where we should be found is in Christ. And so to assess ourselves, we should look where we are, which is in Christ. Now by glancing just around the room, you all look so beautiful this morning. I'd imagine most of you had a, at least had a glance in the mirror. Getting ready. Any, did anyone not have a check themselves out in the mirror before walking into public? <coughs> I know some very confident people probably, you know, yeah, no, I just, I know. I know I am a gift from the Lord. We heard it this morning. It doesn't, it doesn't age out just when you get past two years old. I'm constantly a gift. I remind my wife that all the time. I'm a gift from the Lord, Beck. You are lucky. No, but most, well, I'd say that we all looked in the mirror, right? For the reason of going, do I have eye boogers or eye gun? And just to see what needs fixing, if anything, yeah? Oh, no one's game. <coughs> just the hair, does this match? What's going on there? Oh, should I? Oh, tomorrow, Monday, starting at the gym or going on that diet. We've all done these kinds of things where we're looking into the mirror just to see what, if anything, needs changing? Do I need to align something to the image that I, I would like to look like? And the, the Bible uses a metaphor, and I'm going to use the metaphor. It's not, it's not this is this, but it is like a, a, it's a metaphor that compares the Word of God being like a perfect mirror that reveals who we are more perfectly than, than any other kind of mirror. Anywhere else we go to find our identity, anywhere else that we go to see who we are or to grab a hold of to say, this is me. 
You know, I've got this kind of personal trait, therefore this is me, and I'm good at that, and I'm pretty, I'm strong, I'm rich, I'm st- and that is me. No, it says that the, Bible, the Word of God, through Scripture or through prayer, whatever, is, is this perfect mirror. We see ourselves, and it's in James 1, 22. <coughs> it says, but don't just listen to God's Word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the Word and don't obey... It is like glancing at your face in the mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and you forget that you've got eye boogers. <laughs> you forget that it looks a little bit off. <laughs> you, look, you look, and you forget what you look like. Now, for me, I'm a big believer that the Word of God, particularly in the Bible form, it, like it, as much as you might read it, I think it reads you a lot more. In the sense of what I mean by that is when you read it, I don't know, if you've read the Bible, all of a sudden something like jumps out of the page and smacks you around for a second, like going, oh, did Paul watch me and then write this, did he? Ooh, all of a sudden it's like, or or something jumps out and reaffirms that you were loved and accepted at the moment that you needed it. It shows you something about yourself and, and it's not just through the Bible, it's through our prayer as well. When the Word of God comes, this wasn't referring to the Bible, it wasn't written at the time, They were writing it. Um, it, When you're hearing from God and he says something about you and then we go, oh, that's great, and walk off and forget about what God has said to me. Forget about the revelation that we've picked up. Forget about, you know, maybe the things that that have been spoken to us, whether maybe at church or in our small group or just over the dinner table. And it was God that was in it and we walk away and forget what it was like. I, I really think that those kinds of things, the Holy Spirit tends to read and reveal us a lot more than we give Him credit for. And I'm going to use this metaphor of these mirrors because I think just as much as the Word of God reveals who we are, we tend to go to what I'm going to call carnival mirrors far more often than we go to the, what God is saying about us. Now, you know what a carnival mirror is? You've, you've seen them, they're like old school filters where you go stand before them and all of a sudden you go wonky. You know, you get a big head or a long neck, you become like two foot each way and all squiggly and all these kinds of things. And and what it's doing is it's showing you you. It is you. It is what you look like. But it's just showing you in a distorted kind of manner. It's not showing you someone else. It is 100% showing you you, but it's just showing you distort it, <laughs> squiggly, as I like to call it, yeah? The carnival mirrors. And we, too often, I think, go to carnival mirrors to see who we are. And we start to assess ourselves based on the image of a carnival mirror. We accept ourselves and love ourselves based on what we see in a carnival mirror. We kind of assess and try to change our image to conform with what the carnival mirror is showing us probably needs changing. Even if it's a lie, even if it's not accurate, even though it is distorted, we tend to trust the image we see in a carnival mirror maybe a little bit more than what we're seeing in the mirror of the Word of God. No matter what it says, even though God says one thing about us, we go to other ones, who we are, what we look like and how we should feel about ourselves and assess everything there. We look, maybe it's a relationship. We look horizontal things. And we look in, in a mirror going, ah, I've got a relationship. And it's, it shows you you. It's not not you. But it's not the place that we should be finding our image. A job title, a level of income, some political alignment, whether I'm successful or whether I feel like maybe it looks like I'm a failure. Some personal traits that I want to identify with or I gain some, something from. Even in ministry, we see it all the time. People going like, I am a pastor. I am a this, I am a that. I am doing this well. And, and all of a sudden, we ride the highs, don't we? But also, we ride the lows. When we're on the top of a mountain, I'm fantastic, I'm amazing, everyone should listen to me. And then we hit a low and we go, I must be a failure. God's hand must be off my life. And we go, oh, what kind of carnival mirror are you looking into? <laughs> Because that is not what the Word of God is revealing about you. So what kind of wonky mirror are we looking at when we're reviewing ourselves, when we're feeling about ourselves? I'm not led by my feelings because I can't trust my feelings. 
I don't know about you, my feelings are wonky donkey at the best of times. I don't trust them. I've got to trust what the Word of God says about me. Other people say things about me, but that's fine. Other people never gave me my destiny. They can talk as much as they want. I'm interested in what the Word of God says about my future. My future is in his hands. Like little Jonas, we put him in the hands of God every day. I go, God, I am in your hands. I don't wanna be in the hands of others. The value I place in the mouth of other people will kill and they'll lift me up, but they'll kill me just as quick. I need to put that value back in the mouth of God. So when we're looking at ourselves, we have to make sure we are approaching it in the right manner. not assessing in carnival mirrors, not looking to other things because they will show you you, but they'll show you distorted. They'll show you a little wonky. They'll show you things that need changing that God has never said needs changing. And they'll hide things that God wants to look at right now as if they're not really there. So you Christians, we struggle with this, with carnival mirrors constantly. Uh, in fact, there's a secular tool that we use as a, as a campus. Uh, Ken's mentioned this before, an assessment that we use for onboarding all our staff around the, around the campus and using a lot more, it's, it's quite helpful. But there's one, one section that comes out uh, in certain roles around the campus. It'll show you thousands of different personal traits and self-image things and behaviours and thoughts and it's really fascinating but against certain roles it will elevate traits above others and say these are important to look at and in these some of them uh, it will reveal this thing called self-acceptance and whether it is high or whether it's low and obviously there's some things that you go I'd like it'd be good to have people around that are healthy self-acceptance or other things it's like apparently they they deem it's not important Um, Anyway, it's quite fascinating what, what's going on there. Anyway, this secular kind of research company that has designed these tools all across the world, th- tens of thousands of users every single year, and what they have realised is the handful of Christians that are in the organisation who roll this out have identified that across the world, on average, Christians score lower on self-acceptance than anyone else. Which doesn't seem Right does it? Now, it's not because I think that Christians should be up themselves. (laughs) And maybe that's where others are coming from. I don't know. Maybe it's low because of false humility going, oh no, I'm so lowly. I'm just nothing without Jesus. And maybe (laughs) it's probably right. Maybe we know that we've got a long way to go. Like we're quite aware that, yes, I've been saved, but I'm a long way off where I need to be. I'm very aware of my state. Whatever, whatever it might be, I think it is displaced low self-acceptance because although I, I might not be much, in Christ I am. It is wrong theology to be talking ourselves down so much when Jesus has said something counter. Now, this is where it becomes rubber hits the road, is if God has said one thing and we say another thing, who's right? Because the moment we say, I am, well, the Bible everywhere else calls that pride. And this is the battle of the believer, is constantly realigning our thoughts and our opinions, our life, back to what God is saying about whatever it might be, but including us. Now, if he says that you are accepted, the battle of the believer is to say, I am accepted. And so I'm going to accept me. I know God has accepted me. And and honestly, whose else acceptance am I looking for? That if I have God and no one, I have more than I need. If God says that I'm loved, I know that I'm loved. I might not feel loved, but I'm not listening to my feelings. I know that God says it, so I'm believing it. That's the end of the story. If God says that, whatever, fill in the blank, I know that that is what the truth is and I'm going to align my life in that way. See, we should be confident in who we are in Christ. Again, I'm not trying to build up your self-esteem outside of Jesus. I know all my insecurities, they're valid if I were apart from Jesus, but I'm not. 
I have to be confident, not in that I am great and that I'm significant and look at the wonderful work that I have done and I've got a long way to go, but man, I've done a good job. No, I'm coming back to going in Christ, He is great and I am found in Him. He's made me worthy. He has saved me. He has freed me. I am made brand new every single day because of Christ. Come on, Christians, again, can I bring it back to Jesus is the hero. In our identity, Jesus is the hero. It's not that you are beautiful, but you are found beautiful in Christ. It's not that you are worthy, but you are made worthy in Christ. It's not that you are destined for heaven, but it's because of Jesus. Now you are, you have a hope in eternity with Him. Come on, He is the hero of every thought and every pattern and every attitude that we have as believers. It has to come back to this simple phrase, in Christ, in Christ. In Christ, we look at ourselves in a carnival mirror and start assessing, going, I don't like, oh, I've got a bad attitude, I've got this sin, I am this, all of a sudden, I, this is how I identify. No, 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 we've got to come back to saying, can I say this in Christ? Because I am free, I am new, I have a hope, I'm loved, I'm accepted, I'm healed in Christ. I might not be seeing it fully yet, but I am on my way there in Christ. See, too often I, I hear language that reveals to me we're using carnival mirrors more often than the Word of God to reveal who we are. Oh, I'm not me because of the relationship I have, the education, the money in the bank, the status or people I know. And I am me because of what Jesus has done. And He is the hero. I'm something because I am in Christ. Then this is the gospel message, isn't it? It's like an innocent man swapping places with a guilty person on death row, trading that place, substitutionary, trading that place. Jesus stepped in and took all the guilt, all the identity, all the, all the issues, all the sin, all that I deserved. And it wasn't just that I got to sneak out the back door and escape, but I got to take his place. It wasn't just, I'll take the death penalty for you. It was, I'll swap you places. Now you're a royal priesthood. You are a son of the throne. You are heir to the throne. You are the king's kid. This is how we, this is what the gospel was. Not quickly, go fix yourself up before anyone notices it was Jesus and not you. No, it was swapping places entirely. This is the gospel. He, when God looks at you, this is, this is it. most of us are on social media of some form. <coughs> You'll probably understand this concept then. Is when God looks at you, He is not seeing you for what you are right now. When you are in Christ, He sees you with, with a Jesus filter on. He's looking through the finished work of God. In the finished work of Jesus on that cross and overcoming it, he looks at you with a Jesus filter. So you think you're standing before God fully exposed with all my sin and my faults and my dramas and how could he accept me and, and I'm no good and I probably shouldn't pray. I probably, oh, you know, I can't get involved in that because I'm not that good and oh, I don't know. And, oh, and, and we, we beat ourselves up. But what we need to understand is that when our father looks at us, he looks through the filter of Jesus in the finished work. He sees his son. And so when this is what the, the Word of God reveals to us more and more, is that when we assess ourselves, we put that Word in Christ, all of a sudden we are looking at, through a filter of the finished work of Jesus. Not a DIY project. It wasn't here are all the bits that you can build, but it was I've made you a brand new creation. I'm looking through the filter of Jesus. Come on, I'm not, this isn't a pep talk for self-esteem, this is showing us how good our Saviour is. How good is Jesus? Look, 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sins, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. We are made right with God. We are accepted. We are healed. We are free. We are redeemed completely through Christ. So I'm not going to assess myself through a carnival mirror in church. I'd love you to to be catching yourself through this, but I'm going to look through the filter that God looks through. 
The same when I look at other people, I could be looking at them through a kaleidoscope, through a, through a carnival window, but I'd rather look at people the way God is looking at them going, hang on, no, no, I'm seeing them through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Because I am not what the carnival reveals. I am what God says I am. And church, you are not what everything else might be shouting at you that you are. You are not what you have assessed yourself to be. You are what God says. If you've got the Bible app, I've got about 40 things that you are in Christ. And then at the bottom of it, I've got another 50 things, all with scriptures, that you are in Christ. Don't assess yourself based off what the carnivals are saying and based off what, what other things we get validation from and virtues from. We come back to the word of God. Who am I? I'm made brand new. That might be the old me, but the new me. So you're thinking, well, that's fantastic, but I don't quite live the same way. Yeah? I, I think that as well. Going, well done, Jesus, I'm made brand new, but guess what? I'm still struggling with the same thing from yesterday. What happened to your mercies being new every morning? <laughs> well, thankfully, they are new every morning, right? Otherwise, otherwise, I'd be banking up a bit of bad, bad blood. But you go, well, I'm not quite aligned. I'm not living. I haven't seen, seen the outworking of whatever it is that Jesus did on that cross. See, this is where I'd love to go into it. I have to, I have to cut it down a fair bit, but I might be justified. The Bible uses this word justification, right? You've heard about that one. And a really simple way of understanding what it is, is it's just as if I've never sinned. That Jesus sees us just as if we've never sinned. I'm justified. I'm viewed and I'm made brand new as if I've never sinned. I, that's the filter that Jesus, oh, God's looking at us. But I'm still not behaving fully like Jesus. Anyone got there yet? Locky down here, anyone else? Yeah, oh, I see that hand, fantastic, <laughs> Luke, well done. Anyone else up to their standard? No, I'm just calling randoms out, it's okay. But <coughs> All the people I'm trying to be like. But I'm, obviously we're not there yet, and this is, what, this is what Paul actually wrote a substantial amount about in, in, through all of his letters, becoming more like Jesus. And I like how it's written in Ephesians 4. Uh, it's come up on the screen. It says, Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. And then put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. I like this because it's essentially... Once you've decided to follow Jesus, we are told to change our clothes. <coughs> this is a part of knowing God. And come on, well, now that He's done something in you, it's time to, to change what you're wearing. Change, change the clothes, take off the old and, and put on the new. Everyone who likes shopping is like, woohoo, what's He want me to buy? No, no. It, change these things and the old is referring all the scriptures are actually around this before and after it show a, a more full picture of different things that he's talking about it's the not just the attitudes and our thoughts it, see following Jesus isn't behavior modification it's not I gave my life to Jesus now I have a list of things to fix <laughs> he's not a he's not looking at you like a renovation project that would be I've called uh, the school of legalism where we say yes to God and now I have to perform all these tasks. But following Jesus is more of enrolling in a school of grace where He does a lot of the work, where He is transforming us, changing our clothes, taking off the old and putting on the new. As I said, it sounds a lot like work, but the beauty of God is that He doesn't just point it out. When you go to the mirror of the Word of God, it's not just pointing out things that are going, you've got eye gunk. It's not just pointing out things are going, those shoes don't fit. That doesn't quite look right. It's not just pointing out going, your attitude sucks. That hidden sin, I see it, go fix it. You know, that, that attitude, that what you said, changed the words that you've been talking about. Oh, you've only read the Bible twice this month. Oh, I hope the pastor doesn't find it. Like that's not what the Word of God is, is screaming at you. It's not giving you a list of things to fix up. But most of, it, most of us, like the rest of us, as Ken says, we all kind of see it that way. But what I love Paul's revealing here is that it's when we go to God, when we start going, hang on, reveal to me the changes that could be, can be taken place. He reveals the things that He's willing to give to us. 
That's why it says here, it says, let the Spirit renew. It doesn't say, now go work extra hard. Take off the old and go make your own new clothing. No, it says, take off the old, let the Spirit renew something and then put on the new. So Galatians 5, it might be a bit bit deep, sorry. (laughs) I get criticised for not being deep enough and now glazed (laughs) eyes. But Galatians 5 explains it better than I could. This is what it says. It says, "When, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, which is following the image of a carnival mirror, it says the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, oh gosh, what's wrong? Impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarrelling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living of this sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Here we go. This is what the Spirit wants to renew in us. This is what the Holy Spirit produces. These again, who's producing this? It doesn't say, now go and produce this. It says the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I can't read it without singing the song. <laughs> there, is, there is no law against these things. Those who belong in Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature. They've taken it off <coughs> to the cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So he's saying here, well, don't go to these carnival mirrors to assess what life looks like and who I am and where I need to improve because, well, it says where that ends up and where that leads. But when we turn to, to God and hear His Word through prayer, through Scripture, through just meeting with other, other believers and talking the language that God talks, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit starts to produce something different in us. But our temptation is that we'll run to a carnival mirror just to see if we're on the right track, going, oh, do I have to fix this up? But if we were to look back to the Word of God, He said, I'll never talk to you about that. I'm actually focusing on something else right now. And I'm not just pointing it out for you to go sort it out, but I wanna be there with you. I wanna help this change. You don't have to make the new clothes you put on. It's the Holy Spirit says, let me give them to you. I want to produce something new within you. <coughs> I might not perfectly match up to these things, but here's the thing is that perfection isn't the goal. It's ongoing transformation. And as believers, if we could grab hold of that, it's going, perfection isn't my goal. Yeah. I will one day be perfected in Christ when I'm with Him, but until then, perfection is not my goal, just ongoing transformation is. That I get the joy of unwrapping this gift that God has given. Layer by layer, finding out something brand new that He's given me. Layer by layer, finding out, oh great, I've got something new. I've got something that He wants to to give me and it might take some time for it to get the right fit. But you know, I'm gonna take off my anger. I'm gonna put on some patience because He's working on that for me now. I'm gonna take off that kind of attitude and I'm gonna put in a sweet spirit. It it, it doesn't fit quite right yet, but I know that the Holy Spirit is producing this in me. I'm gonna take off the old and I'm gonna keep putting on the new. I'm gonna keep going back to the Word of God to see see who I am and what I look like and what God is giving me. But I'm not assessing myself based off any other mirror. I'm not looking and checking about the eye gunk in anything else because I know it's distorted and it's telling me the wrong stories. I'm not the amount that I earn and I'm not what other people say about me. I am who God says I am and that's the end of the story. Perfection is not my goal, transformation is. Romans 12, it says, don't copy the behaviours and customs of this world. Don't copy all the other mirrors, but let God transform you into a new person. Who are we letting transform us, church? It's written on the screen, isn't it? Who? (laughs) God! It doesn't say transform yourself, does it? Go work extra hard on yourself. Here is a list of things that you need to fix before you can come into my presence. Doesn't say that. It tends to say it a lot in, in my head, but it's not what the Word of God says. He said, let God transform us into a new person by changing the way we think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. And I pray that you let God transform you, that you can experience the good, perfect, and pleasing. 
because I think we are allowing other things transforming us way too much and it is not feeling very good, perfect or pleasing, is it church? When we're listening to the world and allowing it to transform, it is not, it is not fitting well, is it? It is not pleasing, it is not perfect for us. I wouldn't use the word good for what is going on around the world and has been for well, centuries, but it might not perfectly match up right now and, and no one does, but we have the joy of unwrapping it by His grace every day. So who are you in Christ? Who are you? You are made brand new. You are made brand new. And I have all these things. I grew up with a poster on the back door of my toilet, all in colorful comic sands. It was beautifully designed. <coughs> but it cemented something that, that I'm grateful for. And it's these things that you are. These are only some of them. I am a new creation. I'm justified. Come on, church, you've got to be able to say this. Not right now, but you've got to say this with me at some point. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. That's a hard one. I don't feel righteous. I know my behaviour. But I am the righteousness of God. That is something that I'm putting on every day and it might not fit perfectly right now, but I am working on it. I'm filling it out. I am healed. End of story. I am blessed beyond measure. I am the light and salt here on earth. I am delivered from the powers of darkness. Come on, some of us need to repeat that over. Yeah. I am delivered. I am complete in Him. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am new every single day. I am an ambassador for Christ. I'm the head, I'm not the tail. I'm above, I am not yeah. beneath. I'm set free Come on, from condemnation. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. I'm a child of God. I am accepted. I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. I am created in the image of God. I am holy just as He is holy. I'm filled with comfort and exceeding with joy. I need to say that one more often. I am bold. I am filled with the power of God. I am not weak. I am strong. Oh, and I am anointed and I am appointed to preach the gospel. I am in Him and He is in me. I am saved. I am free from sin. I'm free from sin. Oh, no, but I've been sinning. No, that's fine. I am set free from sin. I just need to stop going back to the vomit. I am free from sin. I'm the apple of my Father's eye. And anything that goes against what God is saying about you is a lie that is trying to rob from your life, your destiny, and your eternity. Anything that we believe from a carnival mirror is robbing you. And we need to come back to the Word of God that reveals who we truly are. So you might not feel this way, but your feelings don't define you. Others might have said something else about you, but others don't give you your destiny. That's only God does that. And you are who God says you are. Full stop. End of the story. We need to stop trusting carnival mirrors. And no, I know who I am because God said I am. Let me pray for you, church. Father, I thank you <coughs> that you sent your son, Jesus, to take our place. And Lord, he took not just our sin, but took the guilt. He just takes our shame, takes the fact that we were guilty as well. Lord, and when He died and rose again, Lord, He conquered those things. He brought newness and fresh life to us. Lord, that there's been something spiritually, it's been an eternal and internal shift. Lord, if we could only see the things that You have done within us, Lord, that I, we would give You so much more praise and we'd be so, so filled I, with joy. Two, three, Lord, because it'd be substantial. If we could one, see what You see, Lord, we e, would accept ourselves. We would two, see ourselves C differently. We would see others differently. Two, Three, eight, Lord, so one, thankful two, that you three, sent the hero. B, you are one, the hero. Two, three, e, Lord, that one, we can rejoice two, and be confident three, in who we are minor, because two, of who you are. Three, four, Lord, I'm thankful a, for that. Two, three, I pray that you help each B, one of us understand two, who you've three, made us to be, four, C, that we are not just who we have become here four, right now, Lord, but we are in your three, image, that we are far a, more in two, you than we are apart three, from you. MB, Lord, help us bring in that revelation MB, that we become confident in the finished M1, work of Jesus, two, that it didn't happen three, with some four, assembly MB, required, two, but it's finished. Four, MB, and that we continue to go to you, MB, Lord, to see what you're C wanting to, 
transform in us, the new garments that we can put on that you're giving us, the new attitudes and thoughts and, and behaviours that you are working within us, not found anywhere else, but only found in you. Lord, that we might be transformed more and more like you. Now in this time of worship, maybe you've never given your life to God. You've never accepted Him and asked Him a, into your life. Really, that is where everything begins. B, that is the moment we are B, made brand new. C that sharp. we can let go of the old and step into who God made a, us to be. This is the, the amazing work of God. That because of what Jesus did two, on that cross, three, we can be four, new. Two, let go of the sin. Four, let go of the pain and the two, feelings and three, everything associated four. with our past and go, God, I want to be a new person. That is what He offers us when we follow Him and say yes to Him in our life. And maybe you've never made that decision this morning. And this morning you go, you know, I, I want to say yes to God. I want to ask Him into my life. If that's you this morning, I'd love to pray for you as you make that decision. I'm not going to embarrass you or call you out and bring you to the front or anything, but, but as an outward sign of an inward decision, would you just raise your hand just to say, God, I want to know you. God, I want you in my life as well. I want to be made brand new. Awesome, thank you. Fantastic. Anyone else this morning? Wonderful. Conscience, would you pray with me for these people this morning? Father, we thank you that you're revealing yourself more and more every single day. And I pray that we have eyes to see and ears to hear all the things that you are revealing, that we don't get any of our, our advice off anything else, Lord, but we, we turn to you. And I pray that as these people this morning and all of us, as we're drawing close to you, that you'll draw much closer to us as well. And I pray that as we get to know you more, that you'll reveal more about ourselves in this world, that we'll experience freedom. Lord, we'll discover our purpose that we can make a difference. In your name we pray. Amen.